Welcome back to another episode of this contest prep series. In today's episode, I want to talk about a few things, uh, but primarily how this contest prep is informing my off-season. In a few different areas, like health, areas for improvement, and finally, the feedback from judges. First up, how is this prep going to inform my off-season in terms of health? I think during prep, you can learn a lot about where your health is optimized, both psychologically and physiologically. So, first up, I want to talk about blood pressure. I used to have somewhat elevated blood pressure. Um, my systolic blood pressure was consistently high, as in above 120, roughly. Um, especially when I was at the tail end of my massing phases. For example, back in 2019, I bulked all the way up to 113, 114 kilograms, which is around 250 pounds. And back then, my systolic blood pressure was quite bad. Uh, I didn't get it measured properly too often. Um, maybe out of shame, what have you. But I was certainly above 140 or so. Um, and so prep is a good opportunity for you to sort of... Obviously, there are confounders like calorie intake being lower than usual, which can impact blood pressure, uh, your salt intake might vary, and so forth. But, and also stimulant use can be different, so for example, during prep, I think most people use more stimulants than they do during the off-season, and so there can be confounders, but it's still a good metric to track to see, okay, what sort of body weight or body fat range am I most healthy in, in terms of blood pressure? For me personally, I've found that my blood pressure is at its best in a healthy range, both systolically and diastolically. Um, in the sort of 95 to 100 kilogram range, much above 100 kilograms or 220 pounds, and my systolic blood pressure gets above 120 consistently, and much below 95, and I actually get an issue where my systolic blood pressure is fine, but my diastolic blood pressure is low. As of this recording, uh, around three weeks out from my show, I pretty consistently have very healthy systolic blood pressure, so it's around 105, but my diastolic blood pressure is around 55 or 50, which is outside the healthy range of 60 to 90. Sorry about that, there's a siren and they're having a great time. Um, and so as far as blood pressure is concerned, it would seem like in the off-season, health-wise, I would be pretty well off in the sort of 95 to 100 kilogram range, plus or minus a few kilograms if I wanted to, um, and that would make me quite healthy. Next, I think prep can be useful for assessing side effects and sort of establishing what a sustainable body fat range is for you. For me personally, up until about 10 weeks out from my show, roughly when I came back from my holidays, essentially, um, I was not experiencing many side effects from prep or from having a body fat that was too low. That was around the time I was maybe 94 to 95 kilograms. Um, Past that point is when I started experiencing side effects like having some depress depression come back, having uh, more irritability than usual, being hungry a lot, more food focus, more body image concerns, and so forth. And so, obviously, once again, there are confounders. Like, if you've been dieting for 20 weeks, then it's hard to discern or delineate whether you're experiencing the side effects from cutting for that long or from just existing at body fat and body weight. But that being said, I think much below 93 or 94 probably isn't good for me psychologically and in terms of side effects like hunger and uh, food focus, body image and so forth. And so once again, the range of maybe around, assuming I'm maintaining or massing, 93 to 100, 102 kilograms seems like a pretty good range. And so I think the second way in terms of health, how prep can inform your off-season is looking at side effects you get at various body fat percentages or various um, body weights. Next up, I think it can also inform you on being a more accurate judge of your own body fat. If you know what you look like during prep as you reach lower and lower body fat percentages, in the off-season, it becomes a lot easier to make an estimated guess, estimated guess, educated guess, um, as to how much body fat you're carrying. In my case, for example, I estimate my stage weight is going to be around maybe slightly below 200 pounds um, or 90 kilograms. 
And if I, you know, just as a rough estimate, assume that my body fat around then should be around 4 to 5%, um, I can then have a pretty good idea of what my body fat is. And once again, that would sort of make me think that I should be around maybe 10%, 9%, somewhere between 8 and 12%, broadly speaking, at around 95 kilograms or 210 pounds. And then I should be around 100 kilograms or 102 kilograms roughly, which is around 220, 225 pounds, when I'm around 15% body fat, at least right now with my current amount of fat-free mass or muscle mass. And so once again, for the off-season, should I want to stay in that body fat range of, say, around 10 to 15%, um, it would seem like around 95 to 100 kilograms or 210 to 220 pounds is a pretty good range. Next, the final way in which I think prep can inform your off-season as far as health is concerned, or sort of just sustainability, I suppose, would be your energy levels, or sort of how much you can tolerate being physically active. Mia! Sorry, my cat is interrupting me. Um, so yeah, energy levels can also vary throughout prep, and it can give you an inf some information on where you're going to feel most comfortable, have the best sessions, and so forth. And once again, my energy levels were pretty good until I reached about 10 weeks out, which for me was around 210 pounds or 95 kilograms. But afterwards is when my energy levels and my sessions and my overall energy levels for daily steps, daily tasks, started to take a hit. So overall, in terms of health, it seems like around 94 kilograms to 102 kilograms is a pretty good range. And that's information that I was able to glean throughout this prep, and that's one way in which contest prep can then inform your upcoming off-season or subsequent off-season. Next, I want to discuss how prep can inform your off-season in terms of areas for improvement. Now, in the off-season, it can sometimes be hard to tell what your weak points are from a bodybuilding perspective and so forth. Um, extra body fat can make certain body parts look a lot bigger or lack definition and thus make it look smaller, or because you have a big waist, certain body parts can look bigger or smaller. And so getting lean can make it a lot more accurate as far as assessing your body parts and your weak points goes. In my case, it would appear as though my chest and arms are still the primary weak point that I have in terms of physique. In terms of informing my specialization phases during my off-season, this has just confirmed the fact that I need to spend some time specializing on chest and arms. With that said though, um, that provides me with good information on what I should be specializing on first. And from then, because I'll be staying in a reasonable body fat range and I can sort of know what my physique looks like during the off season versus during contest prep, I will be reevaluating my weak points every macro cycle or so. So once every three to four mesocycles of massing, I'll be reestablishing what my weak points are. For example, it's very possible that after one or two macro cycles of specializing on chest and arms, I then decide, okay, my chest and arms have come a long way, but now my shoulders and back are weaker body parts, and then I can reestablish what my priority should be and go from there. Next up, after health and areas for improvement, I think the third category of how prep can inform your off-season is feedback from judges. Not every federation does this to the same extent, or at all really, but the WMBF does provide feedback from the judges after your show. You can ask for it. So I'll be asking for feedback from judges regarding what I could have done better, uh, what was good, what was bad, and so forth. And so it's very possible that, you know, there's a few different types of feedback you can get, some of which you can address during the off season, some of which you can't. I think the most common type of feedback after a show would be either not conditioned enough, so body fat was too high or you messed up your peak, that sort of thing, or you lacked muscularity overall, so you just lacked muscle mass compared to your competitors and that's why you didn't do well. Or the, I think, less common feedback would be specific body parts need work. Like for example, let's say in my case, I might have a slightly weaker upper body compared to my lower body um, overall. And so they might say, yeah, for some better symmetry and better flow to your physique, you might want to consider bringing up your upper body especially. 
or people could also get the feedback that your rear side wasn't as muscular as your front side. So for example, I think Matt Ogus, for the OGs that used to watch Matt Ogus in like 2015, 2012, whatever, um, he got the feedback from judges and from Eric Helms that his back shots, so his rear lower bicep, rear relaxed and uh, rear lat spread, just weren't as strong as his front poses. Likely because, you know, bigger quads, bigger chest, bigger front delts and so forth but then relatively weaker hamstrings, back, and so forth. And then the final area for feedback, I think, that is generally given, and it's probably the least common from what I've seen, would be that your posing needs work. I think, in my case, while posing won't be ideal, um, it'll be pretty good. Like, it won't be the thing that needs the most work. So... In terms of what feedback you get, that can then inform your off-season. Obviously, if the feedback is, hey, you just weren't lean enough, there's not a whole lot you can do about that in the off-season, uh, except for maybe start your next contest prep at a lower body fat, or make sure you're in a better position to start the contest prep. But then, the rest of the feedback can be pretty informative. So, if it's posing, I think typically that's also best addressed during prep, as, as long as you spend enough time improving your posing and playing through your strengths, that can be done during prep. But then the muscularity feedback is really where it's at as far as informing your off-season goes. For example, if my feedback turns out to be you didn't have enough muscle overall, okay, that just means overall I need to spend roughly equal amounts of time training everything uh, and just bring everything up because I didn't have enough muscle overall. And so I might switch between specialization phases for chest and arms and then for a macro cycle, do back and delts, and then for a macro cycle, do legs and repeat until I do my next show or until I realize there's a glaring weakness in my physique. Um, alternatively, if the feedback is, oh, your chest and arms were weak body parts compared to the rest, like your side chest and side tricep poses were pretty weak, then in that case, you can also say, okay, let's spend a few macro cycles mostly specializing on chest and arms to bring those up so that then next time you compete, you can have a better chance at placing better. Finally, if they just say, oh, your uh, side poses or your front poses or your rear poses just weren't as good as everyone else's and that's why you didn't place as well, in that case, you can also base your off-season plans on that feedback. So, for example, in my case, I think my front poses might be my weakest because I have fairly smaller arms and my chest isn't quite as big as the rest. In my side poses, I can sort of get away with it via decent posing, but for my front double bicep pose, my um, front lat spread and my most muscular poses, I think I can sometimes appear a bit smaller than what I expect my competition is going to look like. I haven't really been following my competition too closely, so it's hard to tell, but it's possible that I'll get that feedback. So if they say, yep, your front poses need some work, then I'll spend time mostly training my chest, arms, front delts, perhaps, and maybe my quads, if they also think my quads are a weak point, and potentially my calves, if my calves really are that weak of body part. But overall, feedback from the judges can help inform your plans for the off-season. Now, in terms of how my off-season is structured thus far, because I've made some plans in the past few weeks, I will be bulking or maintaining for the six months following my show. At this point, I am carrying a lot of diet fatigue and a lot of contest prep fatigue. Like, I have low energy, I'm irritable, quite irritable, uh, to not use any strong language. And overall, life has just taken a hit. And so for me to sort of get back to a more comfortable point, the plan is to run a recovery diet, wherein in the first month or so, I'm probably going to regain around three to six percent of my body weight which is around three to six kilograms or seven to fourteen pounds ish give or take um and then after that first month of rebounding in weight and eating a lot of food and hopefully getting back into a more comfortable body fat range as far as both my physiological health is concerned and my psychological health is concerned and also just sort of lifestyle overall where um up until around 10 weeks out from my show, I was still able to be quite sociable as far as eating out went, as far as staying out, etc. But then once I dropped past that, I couldn't. And so the first month is really just going to be a phase where I regain around 
7 to 14 pounds to get back into that more comfortable range and sort of put out the fire um, that was burning and wrecking my body during prep during the last around 10 weeks. But then from there, the plan is to mostly mass for another five months with some brief maintenance phases to drop fatigue or to allow for some holidays for Christmas and that sort of thing. And so overall, over six months, I'll be going from around 90 kilograms or 200 pounds to around 100 kilograms or 220 pounds. So get around 20 pounds or 10 kilograms across six months. By the end of that, hopefully my contest per fatigue should be non-existent and I should be ready to do a mini cut or do a full cut to get back down to around 95 kilograms or 210 pounds and then continue massing from there. I don't have any plans of competing again for a while unless my life situation really is in a position where I can compete well successfully without it hitting or impacting my life too much unless that happens and or I do quite well at this show and I enjoy the process a lot unless that happens I'll probably just stick to an off season for a few years anyways we're reaching the end of the video um, you saw me do some supersets and some intensity techniques you saw me do some occlusion training for my biceps now you're seeing me do some occlusion training for my tricep uh, it's just some fun stuff that keeps training from being too monotonous you also saw me doing some supersets for quads and side delts, specifically sissy squats into hack squats, which was rough, and lateral raises into upright rows. Again, just to break off the monotony, it also looks cool, as you'll see now. Uh, doing BFR training can make your vascularity pop out a little bit, and it can be fun to see that deep into prep, especially when getting a pump can be a bit more of a challenge. Um, so yeah. That about wraps up this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment, like, subscribe. It does help out the channel. Um, a video will be coming out soon with physique update. So I'll be going through all the poses so you can see what I look like at around three weeks out. And yeah, that'll be it. I'll see you again next week.